everybody, Brick here. Got another tutorial here for you. Today we are going to be painting one of my berserkers. This particular berserker is armed with a cornate eviscerator. Right now I have him base coated and shaded with some melon oil. The base coats I used are white scar for all the white on the armor. And that was just with a white scar primer. I really recommend that primer if you're gonna be doing anything in white. It's formulated quite well and it sticks to the model nicely without like having a bunch of clumps or anything. Uh, for the skin tone, I used Bugman's Glow, the red Corn Red, the blue Macrod Blue, the silvery bits Lead Belcher, the bronze Balthazar Gold, the little leather parts on the strap here and on his bandolier. I used Rhinoxide, I believe. Yeah, Rhinoxide. And for the grenade on his hip, I used Dark Angel's Green. And we'll go ahead and we'll just start getting some of the highlights done on him. I'm gonna start with the blue right away. And we're gonna go Macrog Blue. Just as a nice little kind of starting highlight to bring that blue back a little bit. Followed by Calgar Blue. And then lastly, Temple Guard Blue. So. Let's get started. Just getting started here on these highlights. So with all the highlights I usually do, we want to start on the highest raised portion of the armor. As we are painting as if our light source is above the model. That can be like the sun, moonlight, corridor lights, etc. Having those brighter colors on top really sells the model's depth as if it's actually like standing out in a field, as opposed to being kind of in a vacuum, if that makes sense. Just steadily going around picking those high raised portions. Doing it like this as well can actually have some really nice effects for transitions. We're having, say, the top of the shoulder pad get very, very bright, but then having the underside of the shoulder pad, say, that nice dark blue as we go around. All right, now we got that blue on there. And as you can see, like from the back, how you have that nice transition from the very light blue at the top to the very dark blue on the bottom. Same with that backpack. If you follow the light, that gradient kind of stays because the more you get the more, that, the more you get to that light source your highest highlight still gets brighter than what's down below on the bottom side of the backpack or the bottom side of the shoulder it's really just my overall favorite method of highlighting now we're going to go ahead and just tackle the red right away that'd be on the handle here on what if those are called? I'm not really sure if anyone knows what those are called. Please feel free to let me know. And just a little bit on the grenade right here as well. There, oh, actually, if we can see, I do have some red in the visor as well. We'll see how well we can highlight that. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that too well, getting a brush in there, but we'll give it a shot. And as for highlighting, we're going to start with corn red all facing the highest point in the the highest point in the model. So that'd be all the stuff pretty much in line with his knuckles all the way through the blade, or through the handle. I'm gonna start with corn, then go to Mephestin Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, and lastly, Wild Riders Red. So, let's go ahead and give that a shot. And once again, just gonna be following the very top of this. Being careful not to get into the cracks on the wrap. We just want to be hitting the top of the cloth so that we keep our nice shade down in the recesses. All right, now we have that red all done on there. As you can see, chasing that highlight off the top ridge. Just a little bit on the grenade here, and a little bit on the outside of his pertuges. I don't remember what that's called. 
And we're able to get a nice effect here on the visor. Oh, able to get a nice effect here on the visor. Now we're gonna move on to the skin tone. This is pretty much just his arm here. And for that, what we're gonna do is just go to some Acadian uh, flesh tone. I just do a nice little highlight on the very top of his skin throughout there. So let's get started. And this will be a nice easy highlight as we have plenty of raised areas to follow on to. Just gonna go through and pick out the higher portions of the skin tone. Just nicely apply that Cadian flesh tone. All right, now we have that skin tone applied, which is once again Cadian flesh tone. The last thing we're gonna go ahead and do with this, well, second to last thing I should say we're gonna go ahead and do is highlight all of the brass pieces and all of the silver pieces. For the brass, we are going to use Scoriax Bronze. And for the silver, we're going to use Stormhole Silver. And we're just going to go ahead and chase, once again, that high highlight. Go on through all of that metal. So, let's get into it. Alright. Now for metal as well, too. If you want to keep your metal kind of having that dirty down worn out look you really don't even have to highlight it you can just keep it as that dirty grungy kind of look really how old you want the look yeah how old you want the metal to look is how much highlight you apply to it and where for me i just like to kind of attack the top edges and just some of the higher portions of the metal as opposed to edge highlighting everything on the metal. But like everything with modeling and painting, it's all 100% up to your preference. All right, we have all that bronze and silver highlighted. So last thing we're gonna do before basing is gonna take that really old dry brush I have, get some corn red on it and blotch around the model to get that bloody defect on there. And of course, getting Blood for the Blood God all up in the blades on this chain X. So, let's get into it. All right, getting in there. Just dabbing all at that blade. Watching it throughout the model. All right, model is all finished up. Got all that nice blood for the blood god in the chain axe blades on his arm, splattered up onto his helmet, and running down his fist. Using gore effects and stuff like this is a great way to kind of tell a story on your model. You know, how they're fighting. Are they using, like, their knees and stuff? How I've got blood for the blood guy on his knee there. Maybe he needs somebody. Somebody might have splattered up onto his helmet when he hit him with his chain axe. Stuff like that. It's a nice way to add character to your model. And last thing to do, of course, is to base it however you choose. For Berserkers, I recommend... Copious amounts of blood for the blood god for their base. And, as always, thank you all for watching, and have a wonderful week.